Welcome back to Watch a Toku About Reviews, where I review two ongoing Tokusatsu series, Kamen Rider Zero One and Kishu Sentai Rus Soldier. And this this week is reviews for episode six and episode twenty nine of those two respective series. Kamen Rider Zero One episode six. I want to hear your voice. Aruto learns that Klein has broken the law with his humor gear purchase, and Jin learns that he is Horobi's son. How will the two deal with the revelations they have discovered? In this episode. Aruto is overseeing a voice actress, Humigi, Saiyan Kanasawa, dubbing uh, the anime of one of his favorite uh, manga when Isamu arrives to arrest, to arrest Saiyan's manager, Seiji, who has violated one of the various uh, laws put in place for artificial intelligences and Humigis. The one that he violated was creating a Humigi and basing their likeness off a human without said human's consent. Seiji has created Saiyan based off um, his daughter who had passed away before she could live out her dream of being a voice actress. And while this is going on, Jin has learned that he is Horobi's son. And this revelation is affecting how he undertakes his job in MetsuboJinrai.net. So this week's episode of Zero One is a kind of a filler episode, but despite this, we learn and develop more of the characters. The primary one being Jin. Jin is told that he uh, is Horobi's son, and when faced with a father, Seiji, protecting his quote-unquote child, Saiyan, he's conflicted with his mission of corrupting Humigears. He actually was about to corrupt Saiyan when Seiji arrived to protect her, and that moment uh, affected him. So, the scenarios that he faces begin to cloud his judgment and he questions his role in life. This is good development for the character, but the development itself was completely rushed. Uh, for five episodes, Jin has been portrayed as a childlike, almost like a psycho. And while this development was much needed for the character to well develop, the conflict is introduced, provides a roadblock, then resolved all within this episode. There's no recurring arc that helps develop on this even more. It's just one and done. I mean, the initial, like, all of it that just comes up is in this episode. It will probably will be most likely touched upon in later in this season um, in a different way, but in this episode, it was really rushed. We also get more details about Aruto's father. So, you know how in the flashbacks, there's a Humigi he refers to as his dad, and it sacrificed uh, he sacrificed himself to save Aruto from the explosion during the daybreak incident. That's not actually his dad. Aruto reveals that his actual father passed away and the Humigi he refers to as dad has been looking after him since then, uh, becoming a replacement father figure. And as such, Aruto refers to him as as, a, as his dad. Um, I'm actually surprised this was brought up and, and explained so early in the, uh, in the series. It, it does kind of kill the mystery of Aruto's Shumigi father. Um, so a bit disappointed there with that. This episode introduces a new form for Valkyrie and a new Kamen Rider. Valkyrie's new form is Lightning Hornet, a Lightning and Hornet themed speed form and uh, flight form as well. Design wise, the form is good. I like it. Debut, debut was okay. If you had more to do with the plot of this week's episode. I feel like the Forbes debut would have been a lot stronger. She's just kind of, she's just kind of there. Unlike, unlike with Aruto and Isamu, when they get a new form, it's something integral to them, to either to the plot or to their character. So it feels like it is a strong debut and it makes sense for you. Her new form, it just happens because here's a stronger form for you. It's, it's much better than your, your primary base form. There you go. And the new Kamen Rider to debut in this series is Kamen Rider Jin. By stealing the Flying Falcon Progress Key and being forced to equip the Metsubo Jinrai Force Riser Transformation Belt, Jin can transform into the Falcon themed Kamen Rider Jin. Design wise, I like the suit. Coloring, coloring isn't particularly my favorite, but it does actually work well with the overall suit design. I think the uh, the debut of the Kamen Rider itself was actually good. Fight cinematography and choreography was good this week as well. The pacing of this episode was a bit rushed. It was, it was a bit noticeable. So overall for Kamen Rider Zero One Episode 6, 
I give it a rating of 4 out of 5 progress keys, a nice filler episode that had good but rushed character development, form debuts, etc. Kishidu Sentai Ru Soldier episode 29, Kanalo's Marriage. Kanalo has finally found himself a bride, but she has one condition. Kanalo must not put himself in danger, but when a Minosaur appears, he is torn between his duty as a Ru Soldier and his quest to find a bride. Will Kanalo choose love or duty? In this episode, Kanalo meets Yui, who is portrayed by Hikaru Yamamoto, most notably known for her role as Akiko Narumi from Kamen Rider W, and the two have an instant connection. Believing, he, believing he's found the bride he's been searching for, he wishes to marry her, but she stipulates that for this to happen, neither of them must put themselves in any danger. Um, this is due to part something that's ha that happened to her in her past, so she doesn't want the, the, those that she loves to be to put themselves in danger so that it doesn't, you know, they don't lose their lives, you know, all that, etc. But at the same time, the poltergeist Manasaur has appeared and Kanalo cannot find himself to break his promise to Yui, quitting his role as a Ru soldier. With Kanalo gone, the Ru soldiers split up to find the Manasaur and the location of the toxic gas it produces, the latter of which leads to an encounter with Gaisorg. This episode was an okay one. Kanalo has seemingly reached the end of his quest, quest of marriage, but is given a big r roadblock, um, given that he is also taken on the duty of a Ru soldier. Given that his main reasoning for being on the surface is to find a bride, he quits, but is still conflicted with his decision. It, it's an alright development for the character and his subplot, but it did feel rushed, given it all happens in just one episode. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad it doesn't fully... Uh, complete his story arc there it would have been just really quick because it it's a subplot that is hardly ever touched on uh, additionally i find it fitting that the um the minister of the week is trash themed uh given that given Kanalo's insistence on being uh you know eco-friendly all that and him meeting yui when while sorting out trash so very fitting that uh the minister of the week has something to do with uh Kanalo, who seems to be the focus of this week's episode. And this episode also reveals the identity of Geisorg, and it is so obvious. <laughs> there was really no surprise uh, there to who he is. Um, but I will give them points at the fact they at least tried to throw everyone off earlier in this season by implying it's Tower and Bamba's master. But um, we finally find out who Geisorg really is, and it really isn't a surprise. Fight cinematography and choreography was alright this episode. However, the scene of Kanala returning, transforming into Russo Gold, and then uh, applying the Biribiri armor onto himself uh, after that is actually a really, really good scene. I really liked it. Definitely the highlight of this episode. Overall, I give episode 29 a 3.5 out of 5 Russo's, an above average episode, above average episode uh, rushed subplot, um, but... Overall, it wasn't a, it wasn't a terrible or a bad episode. That is all for these reviews. Thank you all for watching, and remember, if you're new to the Ozchris Channel Tribe, pick up your Russell swords and slash that like, subscribe, and/or notification bell. If you want to follow me on social media, uh, my Twitter and Instagram are in the end screen, and I will see you all in the next video.